know what the fuck it is. BFR Bulldog. IG35. <laughs> Spillers. Spill shit. Four pockets full. Here with my nigga Chris Bosch. Fuck's going on. Talk to him nicely. We have to hoodie up for this interview. Let's get spilly out here. Yeah, ask some questions, huh? I was fucking rapping, I don't know. Like back in the days, at Nice's house, that's on, on fucking Adobe. Adobe, um, I don't know, one of those, those mixing oh, yeah, I used to programs. Do I used to go right? on that shit too. Those little in house, at the house shit. At the house shit. Recording in the go house. Go get shit. $20 mics from the mall, jam that, go to the B, plug it into your computer, you know, at the back it says mic, plug it in there, mix our own shit. We're fucking around. You know, shout out my nigga, I, nice umbrella. That was like my first time like, dropping. That was like my first song that I made like public, I say. And I dropped it on Presso's, Presso's like SoundCloud. So like when it first came out, like one, two people used to think that it was like Presso's song. Like even I remember like girls used to like say that, yo, song's hard and shit. And Presso used to tell them, that's my homie. And that's when I knew that was like a rap and shit too. That song's nosy still. Um, for me, like, I just see like my nigga Presser, same shit. Going and getting free bands, getting a rich outfit, and don't have to do nothing, making legit money. So I knew that I could do it easily too, because my one of my close friends was doing it, you know? So I started doing the same shit. And I remember when I first got out though too, when I got when I got sent back from America, Presser like lined up a feature for me so, from somebody and I got like a four key. Or feature like my first day on the road. That's kind of like, I you know after that, like, there are free bands I can get up to shit. You know? Real deal, me, I fucking, yeah, it's off of them. You know, I'm just riding their wave. Like, then day I see these guys tune chords, getting fat rickety's in it. Basically like that. I just seen, you know, we had the infrastructure, had the resources to get features from all of them. We had the clout, we have the wave. Niggas had the sauce before rap. So at the end of the day, it's like, why not, right? Free money, legit money, another, you know, stream of income. That's pretty much it. I don't even know. I don't know how to explain like that. I think that we had fans like before even we were rapping and shit. Like, people already know who we are. Like, we'll go to certain places like out of town and people just know us so, so, like social media. Like, before we even, we always had fans. Yeah, it's been fans. And been fans before we ever rap. From LFK days, FK days, Fresh Kid days, they know what time it is. Even the youngins on the block. I know a lot of kids on the block want to be me, just like I want to be certain mans on the block, like mans like Getty and shit. No Baldy, age and them. But I know. It's just fans at the end of the day. When you have the sauce, you have the drip, you have the whip, niggas gonna want to be like you. It's always been fan moments and shit. But to go back, I wouldn't really know. To go back to my first experience, niggas just been fan. Ops are fans, beer fan. Nah, I don't, I, don't, I don't think so. I think I had like, I, mean, I dropped like one video or two videos before I got, like, before I was on, like, got into any, like, legal problems and shit like that. Mm-hmm. So, like, I have a little, like, growing a little fan base right there, and then I went ghost for a little bit. So, when I came back, they were just like, they heard that I was thought out, they were just sort of like, waiting for, like, some music so like right away when i just started dropping music right away they're just eating it up eating it up to you know mm-hmm. but they already were like fucking with me before it that shit happened but i was good like i was i was blessed i was like i was in, a, in a la with palm trees and hot weather every day drinking lean beat down every day fucking like, i was living this i was living life like i didn't like well, i didn't feel like i was on the run to be honest i thought it was something like Big vacation, and I was there for so long that like it just turned into like regular day life to me, to be honest. But all my music that I used to record on the run, it used to get leaked. Like back then, we had like a crazy leaker. Like I don't even know who that leaker is to this day. But I don't know, we know how I used to get our songs, but he used to fucking put all the shit on YouTube before fucking the man who could ever drop our shit. It'll be like fucking. 10 videos of the same song. This song has 50k, this song has 100k, this song has 30k. Like, it'd be crazy. Like, niggas were just leaking our shit from back in the day. So I already knew, like, niggas are fucking with my shit. 
And I used to just record shit. I used to like fucking meet people, Jay Kirsch, a lot of niggas, and just go to the studio. And I used to go mad. You want to fucking flip all the leakers. Or you used to always both? Yeah. No, fuck, flip leakers. Yeah, fuck it's up crazy. the bricks. It's crazy, bro. That fucks yeah. up your money at the end of the day. There'll be like fucking one song that has 10 different videos of it. And those could all just been one video that's eating one fat change, you know, like one money or some shit, bro. Free deal. Yeah, it's free deal. That was back in 11, right before we went to jail. Like, right before the, the Project Marvel and shit. We got in the studio in BC with me, him, Gully. Shout out Gully and Stacks from B3 and wiped it out. And there was like a B, BBM sensation, you know? Shit went viral on BBM those times. There's no Instagram, yeah. Twitter, you know? There's no Spotify like that. And I used to see, I, like, I used to be in, in jail, niggas used to rap that song to me. And then I'd be like, I'm on that song, let's be on that song. And they'd be like, what? No way, that's you. Da, da, da. Like, I didn't even know that. Like, that, that was just like a regular song. The song's called Free DL because it was a beat from YouTube that the man I'm got, and it's free download. Yeah. So it's just a so free, just DL, free DL. And we just uploaded the song with that free DL. Like free download. Beat. Sometimes we're not even paying for beats, straight free downloads. Oh, from when I was, yeah, not when I was younger. Like, I just started really rapping, like, recently, 2016. So, like, the last time I ever went to jail, that was, like, when I had a little rap club. Before that, I wasn't really rapping. So. For, like, right now, when I got, like, a little dust, little breach charge, and I went there for something, I got a little knock for hammer one day. That time when I went there, like, I see, like, rap club from those times. But when I got knocked, like, 2018, I didn't really have, I didn't really have that much music. I wasn't, like, the rapper YG, you know? But when I went back the last time, I could see like them coming to my cell at night time. Like, oh, I heard that you were here at YG. Da, da, da. I'm like, talking shit. I see him bitch, like, fucking down from my glass. Like, oh, what's Presser saying? Da, da, da. Like, when's the new music coming out? This, da, da, da. When are you getting out? Like, just asking me fucking weird questions and shit. Like, I'll just be like, trying to fucking, I'll just say whatever, talk about like, my little shit to them. Like, just go part of myself, whatever, you know, on intake. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's crazy. It's a surreal feeling. At the end of the day, like, he's putting me on the phone with Meek Mills, putting me on the phone with other celebrities and shit, and it's just surreal, fam. I remember one time I was in jail, I had Meek Mills on the phone. I swear to God, you would have thought Meek Mills was there in the flesh, because I'm by the phone, and everyone's fucking watching the phone. Like, I'm looking down at the phone, and there's a crowd of people watching <laughs> me, Talk to Meek Mills. Because <laughs> the whole jail just heard that. Yo, Meek Mills is on the phone. So everyone is just on the fucking... Right there. Just I'm looking down at like 20 people, 30 people. The whole range is right there looking at me. You would have thought Meek Mills is right there and they're fucking looking at me. <laughs> <laughs> the mod, man. But that's all I say. Like, those are those moments that you get. And a lot of people didn't believe, you know? So I'll be sitting on the phone. I'll be telling them, oh, bro's doing good. Or bro's doing this. Bro's doing that. And they, they wouldn't really believe. They just thought, like... Niggas was joking and like, now they respect it, you know? They're like, holy shit, I can't believe that. Bro, you used to tell me that you're gonna do this when you touch road or you're gonna do this and man, we're gonna go hard and blue feathers. Like, cause I, that's all I used to promote in there. I used to walk around the jail with my fucking, my, um, my, my little binder. You would have thought it was a laptop, you know, do beer notes, <laughs> go to fucking, go to the library, tell the librarian to print off beer shit for me off of Google, cause we don't have Google in there. So I'll just tell me, you'll type this question into Google, you'll type it in, and then you'll print all that shit off. And then I'll just go pay that, like five cents a page, five cents to, to a page. And then I'll go on my cell, I'll just read it, and I'll just help press all day with his, with his success, you know? And just give him a free game to the phone, you know? I went Turkey, Milan, we went Italy, Poland, Barcelona, Barcelona, Barbea. London. London, Paris, Paris, uh, on so many places, like 10 different things. Yeah, I went, went to Paris, yeah. spoke with Gazo, shout out Gazo. Went to Italy, spoke with Shiva, went to Barcelona, spoke with uh, Benny, Benny, Holden, spoke with all my 2115 niggas. Marbella, it was just more vacation in Marbella. We shot videos in there and took yeah. pictures and shit, but there was no really artists. Oh yeah, we we, we, we recorded it. We recorded, we recorded with the one two yeah. Marbella artists. Yeah. My dog showed them all too. Yeah, fuck. We did it everywhere we went. Okay. 
We recorded still. Went to London, bro did the shit with uh band okay in them. And then yeah, Paris. So everywhere we went. Turkey. Everywhere we went, we were just everywhere we went some something got recorded in the like, episode. Like, and videos. If not like if I never recorded, probably person recorded something there. If person never recorded something there, probably I recorded something. But everywhere we went, we've seen a studio. Something got done in that. I was like, fuck yeah, that's crazy. Cause I was like, for me, that was like most people that I got to put in front of that didn't know my songs and shit. Yeah, yeah it's like going crazy for me. And that, like, that's like my city. I never really got that to perform in Toronto before. I don't think that's probably my first time. Actually, it wasn't my first time, but like that was my first time. Like it's such a big place. So it was lit for me too. I never really got that feeling yet. You know, like every crowd I perform is like these guys crowd, like YG or Press or Bernard. OGZ, you know the OGZ will bring a little soul. Shout out to OGZ, and it's just these guys' crowd. I never really got to perform in a crowd where everyone knows my lyrics. So to see that for these guys is sick. Like I see it with Burn Up Press, YG. It's a crazy feeling, you know. So I was just more living through them and rolling out. It wasn't really about me. So it was just good to see these guys just shining and them seeing everyone's work and all the hard work that they've been putting in for years. You know, they deserve it. You know, to really kill the stage and let the city know, like who really represents the city, who really runs the city when it comes down to music-wise, because these guys have been putting in the most work, so it's only right that they d- deserve that shit. Because other than that, it's the recognition that they need, and Roland Loud should see that, the city should see that, and everyone should see what what happened that day. Because these niggas really rocked the state, and I don't think no one else could have did it like that. And you know, rest in peace Houdini, if he was there, it would have been more of a movie, I'll tell you that. And Talib, and if Talib got to perform, we could have just did a whole set, two, three hour set, about the rolling out main stage. I don't know. I don't know, I just fuck. seen us fucking with Benny. They are started pat- spazzing, I guess that's his ops. But we don't know if that's his ops. We don't know what the fuck going on over there, you know what I'm saying? For any of you here in Toronto, I don't know what the fuck you got going on in Toronto, but I'm trying to say the man we're in his DMs or whatever. Benny said, fuck him, it was fuck him, right? That's just what it was. And it wasn't even on no rap shit. We don't even jump in niggas' politics and shit like that. But you already know, fuck man. This nigga's acting like a bird, so like, at the end of the day, fuck. Fuck him. What do you say? Fuck the ops. So that's what Benny said. <laughs> fuck, fuck the ops. Fuck the ops. FTO. You know that? Was that word you always said? You know, all up? Was it? You know, the broski word. Yalla, 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 you know that word. All, 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 everybody. That's it. I don't, I don't have a favorite. Cause everybody, I feel like I have, I have a, a song that I like, but everybody, that's hard. Yeah, different. I have a hard song I read all, oh, like every one of my homies that's, like, does numbers or some shit. Or has, you don't think that it does numbers on YouTube or something, but it has like bare numbers on like a Spotify or Apple or some shit like that. A couple million streams. Just like, oh, bare songs. For my niggas that are hard to be honest. And everyone gives like a different vibe, you know? Yeah. There's the burner vibe. You want, you want a certain like vibe, you want, go yeah. for a YG yeah, vibe. Exactly. You want a press machine vibe, you go for press machine. You want Houdini, you want J There's all very different vibes, you know? You want Talib vibe, you go for the Talib vibe. So everyone compliments each other. Beanie special. <laughs> you know the beanie special? We gotta get that. Yeah, beanie special. It's like a, a one finger, two wings, and fries. Don't forget honey garlic. Honey right? garlic sauce. It's like three something. Like 325 or some shit. 375. Oh, we didn't have that special. That's a 10, a 15 year old special, bro. I don't know, fuck, there's a new fish and chips. I don't know if they know about the beanie special right now. Still got bought up, changed the name, still added the fish and chips. We fucked up because Randall should have bought it. Should have some <laughs> fucking BFR kitchens or something. I knew it was fucked up still. I should have bought that shit. Put two Jamaican foods in there. Man, still. Who are your Hopefully favorite? they're selling it. If they're selling it, we're going to buy it next time. We're not slipping up. If they sell a tad more, we buy a tad more still. Buy something on the block. I need something over there. Well, let me ask you a question. Who was really there before Drake? You know what I'm saying? Like, what the fuck? 
Like, who was there before Drake? Who was really rapping? Are you talking about underground or a big level? Like, like underground. Like when I when I was young, I was listening to like Sam G, fucking part of this and them. Yeah, I believe that's pretty much it. Yeah. Before that, the man of YBK, Bills and Greedy. I mean Bills, Greedy and Snow, Gully them. But like there, that was our era. Before that, it was Smugglers. But like, well, if you're talking about real rap wise, yeah, like, fuck, I used to listen to like Drake. I already knew Drake was gonna blow. I knew Weekend was gonna blow. I knew Tori was gonna blow. I thought D Pride was gonna blow. Those times he was going at it with Tory Lanez, and then I thought like the John Rivers kid was gonna blow. Certain people I was rooting for, you know, John Rivers. Rooting for Nav too, cause yo, one time I was in the pen, I seen Nav on Travis Scott's album, Goosebumps. That made me go crazy. I seen Tory Lanez on fucking BT, so I was going mod. I was like, oh, man, I'm getting some traction. Then I seen Tory Lanez on McMill's album, but I knew it was Tory Lanez, but he never credited him. You'd have to literally go into the credits and see like the day start his name to know his story. But I know his story, but it didn't say like featuring. featuring yeah, him. you know. So sometimes that happens. Like I think they did that to like Don Oliver. I think Travis Scott did that too. On that that hard nosey song. That's when I first heard of Don Oliver. Maybe he did give him credit. But I don't really like when rappers do that. Yeah. Try to hide that nosy feature. <laughs> right? Because Tory Lanez was giving them beer hooks those times. Honestly, the city wants to take it to the next level. Um, support structures. We got a lot of support structures. We got the grants. You know, we got the camera crews doing their job. We got the we got the producers doing their job. We got guys like Keep Six Solid doing their job and Six Buzz doing their job. You know, everyone's doing their job, and like the artists are doing their job. We just need some more recognition, and we just need to build the market, and we need more people tapping in to our city. More like academics, you know, like see how academics was helping us and supporting us. For sure, you need top five back. That's hundred percent. Like we really want the city to go up. Niggas need to free top five. She was really giving us a lot of traction and bringing a lot of people to our city, and like shedding a lot of light on our city uh, in, in terms of rap, you know. So you need those type of viral moments. You need people to make sure that. that they're gonna help, you know, promote this shit and market this fucking this industry that we got going on or this little thing we call rap going on. So if you guys really want that. And obviously we have the big guys, Drake and Weekend and Tory. They need a free Tory too. He's really that was detrimental to us. And we just need press of the blow too. Like at the end of the day, if you guys want us to keep this shit going, we gotta help each other and help more artists make it out so other artists get motivated and get inspired and see there's ways to to make it out you know because if, if they don't see a guy making it out like if drake didn't show us it was possible there would be no weekend weekend didn't show us there would be no tory links you know what i'm saying mm. and then there will be no pressa there will be no houdinis and niggas because like right now look at for instance for the nba let's transition to the nba there was no tristan thompson and corey joseph or no denim brown there wouldn't be no Andrew Wiggins or or Shy or Jamal Murray and all those guys are going hard because now people realize there's talent in Toronto and if anything there's way more talent than there isn't over there because you know we're the underdogs so we want it more and we're going harder so at the end of the day like I just feel like we just need more more pioneers and more 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 Tristan Thompsons and more Corey Josephs or Andrew Wiggins in the rap game more drinks and more shit just like how Atlanta has a million rappers so we just need more rappers to get put on more kids will believe and they'll work hard they'll develop their talents and then more producers we need more everything uh i don't know it's just fucking not serious just fucking internet fun shit and he just put his head in something he should have never put his head into. You get what I'm saying? Like, we don't know you from nowhere. Yeah, you're jacking those guys. Cool, jack them, nigga. But don't be out here fucking commenting shit and trying to involve yourself in shit that doesn't involve you. That's all it is. Niggas just need to stay out of the way. 
I'm not gonna go and start commenting about your dead homies in London and I don't know your dead homies just because you're chilling with my ops or you're linked in with my ops. You're gay. Like any niggas jumping on niggas bandwagon like that, it's just gay fam. We don't diss niggas unless they diss us fam. So these niggas started the shit. And we just stand on business. At the end of the day, you're not just gonna diss them at them and man, we're not gonna just say nothing and just take it dry. So at the end of the day, fuck this guy said dumb shit. If we just said whatever, but it's not serious, you know? It's whatever they wanted to be for. Free Lowski too, like, they got knocked with a fucking... <laughs> a BB? Uh, uh, staple gun or something. <laughs> no, they said it was a ray gun. <laughs> they said free that they guy. They said it was a ray gun. I don't know who he was trying to kill with that gun. <laughs> well, fuck. Why? He was better free off that. with a shank. Free that he should have been prick. What did they say again? They should have said he should have been pricking a tall on or something. He should have been pricking a fucking knife. Like, oh, Holy God. shit. We would have just disarmed him. If we ever seen him in London with that, I would have boxed him. I said, Mike, give me this. I could have hugged a couple of those too. What are you saying? Go hug them? For sure. That's like a staple. <laughs> It's a free, you need to free that guy. I want to box two of those grades. Bring, bring that yeah. gun back to Staples. Like, what do you mean? If I was trying to rise it on me, I'll just box a grade back to him like it's some fucking Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> fucking waste. We didn't even start perking. We weren't even perking those when we started perking. That's crazy. I've <laughs> never seen that in my life. I've been 10 years old, I was perking that. I am perking big fists, four fives and shit. 1911s and shit. And a freaking deuce deuce for every single double act, the single action pop, one pops. I don't know, London's mod still. So. Shout out my nigga Rowdy Rebel. I got one with him. My nigga B Man told me to drop that smoke pop smoke song. That has um rest in peace for my dog. You know? That's him on it. Drink on it. Yeah, well, rest in peace to Draco. He went on it. Five's a guy. Five sent him the song. He went on it. Just a real nigga. You know? That was my first feature I ever got. Was Draco. Then I got the old Jeezy. Then I got the Rowdy, you know? A couple members, you know? Just more members. And that's pretty much it. I don't really be asking for features like that. But if I ask, them, niggas would give me more. Niggas, it's just organic. We're in the studio. Niggas go on a fucking go on song. Like, my niggas will go and send these people songs and put it on for me. I never really paid for a few before. Right? Yeah, press and met him on tour, right? Press and met him on tour and um, on uh, the Boys Meet World Tour with Drake. Ever since then, they clicked. And that's more impressive re relationship. And then Diggs is just a real nigga. He just shows everyone love. Like, just like whoever press fucks with, he fucks with, like, you know? And he just come from the same place, you know? Then he just calls me randomly, talks about family, I'll just call him randomly. And yeah, we're supposed to be going celebrating his birthday just now. He's just a real nigga, fam. You don't make them like that in the industry. Like, in, in the industry, it's hard to find real niggas and real genuine niggas, you know? So when you find those type of niggas, you just gotta cherish it because niggas are more locked in than music. And I like when the relationships are more locked in the music because the music comes after and that's one of the relationships we have where music comes after the relationships really first <clears throat> that's my bro if he calls and anything he needs i'm doing you know and vice versa if we call him anything he could do we're gonna do he's gonna do right so and then they, that's what it is but that's a real ass nigga the landlord he understands it he understands what the goal is we understand okay, That's so crazy. I was in fucking, I was on the run in America those times. Like, I just wanted to be free. I was saying, fuck, if I was free, I would have been on tour with you guys too. Like, there's like a fucking next nigga got to put on for their homies and bring them along on tour and shit too. Like, I would have got to come along, just fucking get that opportunity and part of press and just meet people and do whatever. You know? Yeah, man, because yo, the, I when you guys went on tour while I was in jail, you know? So I was, I was happy, you know? And fuck. I remember talking to these guys, Banana, him, Smoke Dog, talking to fucking all the man and shit. It was just, they're just telling me what's going on in tour. But you see, when I was in jail, what's crazy about it is like, I always wanted to travel the world. So all these places they're going, they're going to Berlin, they're going to Germany, they're going to Paris, they're going to Poland, they're going to Norway, they're going to UK, they're going to London or wherever, you know? 
these guys got to go do that on a free budget on drake's budget free flights free tellies free everything because you see how much money we had to spend doing it our, ourselves so just to get that free experience that's what we do it for bro and like just to like you said to network and meet mad people because you could just imagine how much people are backstage i go to shows out here in toronto and it's nothing like that and i i just want i just want one of those tours like even when i see the boy and shit, that's all i ask him for honestly i say yo bro i just want to go on tour i know i need to be part of the tour i just need to be on the tour rolling uh backstage meeting people telly the telly fucking around after party to after party bro. locking in you know the man did that with the weekend too weekend was over here the cash and I, i know that nav tour was crazy like for in america i'll be on those type of tours i'll just go on those stories you know so i like it's good you know it's good for networking and it's good for like getting around and seeing the places because i just i'm the type of person i just want to go to every city and every country and i just need a reason to go there and touring and music will bring you to a lot of places because a lot of places i would have never went if it wasn't for music shout out like press because like that whole europe tour we would have never even did it if it wasn't for press we had reasons to be in barcelona we had reasons to be in poland we have reasons you know and and it's really due to music you know and that's just what it is we have reasons to be in paris we have reasons right now i'm trying to go to japan i'm trying to go to china you know india wherever well bali or fucking thailand i just need a reason I'm over there. I need to see the world. Yeah. Uh, it depends. I'll do. I'll. I'll do a label. Depends if like it's not for barriers and stuff. But like we could. I think that like, we could all. We could all do it. A label if we really wanted to. We just have to like really go talk to those people and lock in with them. Like we're just fucking so busy, just running around and just doing this regular life and shit. That like we don't really look at that shit too seriously and shit sometimes. But. I do that shit all the time. I think anytime I really feel like. Well, well, we still get like fucking even next up distribution deals and shit like that. Like mixtapes, niggas will give us fucking distribution deal just for mixtape, and you know we need to sign for B sign. You can still get a lot of racks out of that too. You know? That's what it is. Like I don't mind. I'll do. I'll do either. But like, if I'm doing a label. I would. I would wanna make sure I get a hit song. And it goes viral. So that way I could just start touring. And like I said, back to touring and shows, that's where big money is. 40, 50K a show, 100K a show, 150 of the big ricks. We just start fucking popping beer shit with that money. Because we busy in that money all day, reinvesting it and doing all types of stuff with that money. So I don't even care about the label. So like when I'm doing the label deal, it's not about the money. It's not about like how long I'm going to be locked in. It's just, it'll be a waste of time to do the label deal be locked in and not get your viral hit you know what i'm saying i'd rather be independent if you're not if if you're not gonna get that viral hit and you're not gonna have the label back in you where you're marketing it where it's everywhere so that way you can make your money back on the road then i feel like you just gotta stay independent because then you can make a bigger bag independent just putting your songs on streams platform, streaming platforms and stuff like that because a lot of people get fucked you know go to label row label's not backing them or the league or they don't even get a hit say they got a hit when they're what when they're independent but now they can't even produce when they're on a label and then fuck you just get burned because you know you're not even getting that much money plus you're not generating no shows to even make back that money that you got staying for type shit. no no <laughs> The song's called Pop Smoke, but for sure, 100%, if Pop Smoke was still here, you'd been fucking him. Sure. I probably had a Pop Smoke song for sure. 100%. 100%. Because at the end of the day, the man and I locked in with those who's GS9, woo, shit, you know? Those guys fuck with us hard, and we fuck with them hard, and it just would have been gangland, right? So that wouldn't even be. That's why sometimes when I think about that, I just get bad. Well, at least, see this. You know, every time he sees me, he sees me with my mask and shit, you know? So, he sees me every time he comes to Toronto. I don't know, he'd be seeing some, me so much all around Calgary, man, this, that. He starts hallucinating, saying he sees me different places that he's never seen me before. My <laughs> 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 dog. But shout out to Leo. We're probably seen Press. Probably thought it was me. You know, Press looks like me in the mask and shit. But fuck, dog. At the end of the day, you know what it is, man. That's my dog. I see him all day. I see him when I talk to him on FaceTime and shit. All day. Time, bro. See him in Europe. 
when he's on his passport, doing his passport shit, you know? Yo, fuck, bro. Tony Ayo, shout out the dogs. Shout out to G-Unit. Fuck, I'm a big G-Unit fan. When he asked about, like, who we were growing up and listening to, G-Unit still. Only even lie, before, like, the Drakes and the Weekends and riding for those guys. The reason why I was riding for Drake and, like, Weekend and Tory Lanez and them, because I felt more closer to them. It's for the city. And it's like, why am I rooting for New York Knicks and we have a Raptors team? You know? Like, if we had a Vancouver team and there wasn't a Toronto team, I'll go for Vancouver because it's Canada, right? So, I'm always going to be behind Canada before anything. But before Canada, we had G-Unit. You know, my mom's bumping G-Unit, Dr. J and shit. You know, we used to listen to fucking Hell Rel, all that New York shit, fucking... What's that next guy? Hell Rel, fucking... Us, Murda, Murda, what? Uncle Murda. Uncle Murda. And what's that next guy's name? Yo, Getty, what's that next guy's name? Yeah, Styles P and them for sure. That next guy, oh, fuck. Come on. It's obviously, Kramer and them. That nigga had the deep voice. Ransom. Saying Ransom was hard. Yeah, we used to listen to dumb niggas. Some real niggas and shit. That's what we were listening to. But 50 was always my guy. Because he's just clown man's get at Ja Rule, get at this person. He's on this bullshit. Came up with that mod album. What do you call it? Get Rich or Die Try. Mod. Then he came up with Massacre. Then after we were bumping the game. The only reason I was bumping the game is because he was on G Unit with fucking 50. And then I used to listen to Start From Scratch and shit. And, I used to, and you know what's so crazy? Before G Unit. Obviously, I was born thousand feet. But my album before the Get Rich or Die Trying Classic was the 2001 Chronic, Dr. Dre. And so crazy, ironic that fucking Dr. Dre signed fucking 50 Cent. And then we, he gave us 50 and we are just running with 50. Running with fucking 50 from In The Club. Um, Mini Man. And my mom is young with those types. She's going to the club. So she knows all the club bangers. She's coming home, bumping all the club bangers, bumping the hard fucking albums and that's how i knew about 50 and shit i'm like grade four grade five bumping him bumping eminem eight miles movie came out bumping eight miles those times i'm bumping all nelly air force ones and and uh what's the country grammar and shit so, it was a good time bt run home watch 106 in park good time growing up so, are they gonna come with ovo b team the merch guys the guys that just wear the merch or they're gonna come with the real team, like the OVO Nico, the OVO Drizzy. Like, I need, I need to know who they're coming with. I then I know team. what I'm coming with. Because if they're coming with the merch team, then I'm gonna come with my merch team. If they're coming with OVO, then I'm coming with BFR. So just let me know. Tell Drizzy Holla, because we already talked about this. We could talk about this a little more. And you just let me know. Because we don't know. You've seen what we did to his merch team, his OVO B C team. One in there, ah, uh, one lay. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they don't even know. Uh, they say, come steal cookies that go down the lane, uh, push up, lay up champions. That's just how it went. But I told the man that I'm going to go there, crush these guys. And then I'm going to go to the house in the path and crush those guys. Whenever they're ready, he said, it sounds like a run, but I don't know. When when he's done tour, talk about that. GY said he could go at him, but I don't know. It looks like the guy doesn't miss. I don't know if it's the editors or he's really splashed like that. <laughs> <laughs> Which one do you think is just like? You think, uh, you think he's nosy like that? You uh, think it's splash? Uh, or it's just an edit thing? Yeah, let's see if he has a hard on the editors. <laughs> he has a hard on the editors? <laughs> Oh, there you go, there you go. You better come and see. We gotta see this in person, bro. I don't know, you're moving like curry out here, fam. Like skin <laughs> curry. But GY said he's gonna lock you down, though, fam. You gonna lock him down? Yeah, for sure. I know that's what I'm saying. So I'm coming with GY. Me and GY are impressed. They have a three for that? Let me know, cuz. That's all I'm saying. Just don't bring the merch team, fam. They already got cooked. They don't even... Yo, they're not even allowed to spectate, fam. Real tough. They're not even allowed in the gym, cuz. They're gonna leave them in Scarborough, cuz. This is West End thing. And guess what? Fuck the path. We're gonna bring you to Driftwood Center. We need Drizzy in the hood. So fuck the path. We don't even wanna play in the path. Sunday runs. Tuesday runs. I'm gonna give you guys the time the man will just come to the hood. You know, like how Drizzy went to jungle? We need Drizzy in the woods. Fish and chips are two picks. That's more legendary than what's going to the path. Right? Get Drizzy in the hood. That's more legendary. Why? Well, noise is good out there in the hood. Fuck, stay in school, you know, like what everyone says, 
but stay focused. And like school, don't get it twisted. Don't really fucking just take everything they fucking feed you. Because a lot of shit they just feed you is bullshit. Take the tools that you need. Because they do work in the real world. You know? So you just got to pick sense out of nonsense. You know, math goes a long way. English goes a long way. You know? There's a lot of skills they teach us. But just, just don't follow. Don't just get programmed. Like, you know? Don't get programmed to just think, oh, yo, because I go to school or I got a good... I went to a good school or I took a good course that you're just going to be successful. It doesn't work like that. When you go to school, pick sense of the nonsense. Make sure you're taking your math. Make sure you're taking your English. Make sure you're you're being on time. You're going to school. Attendance is good. Because before, like when we were young, we don't understand that attendance means something. You know, I'm late for school. I'm not punctual. I'm missing school. So that's when I realized that I'm not doing good in school. So if you're really failing and you're falling behind... It's because you can't miss lessons. You can't miss lessons and think you're going to ace a test. It doesn't work like that. So that's why it's called attendance. And that's why you have to have perfect attendance. Because when you get in the real world and, you have wor- and you're have and you working for someone and you're working for a company, you can't just go in whenever you feel like. You have to go Monday to Friday and they expect you to show up on time. And on time is 15 minutes early. And, on, and, and when you're there on time, that means you're late. So just always remember that. And the, there's a lot of free game that you guys need and that they don't teach you in school, you know, just how to save money and, you know, credit reports and how to not fuck up your credit. They just come give us credit cards and just don't even teach you nothing about that. So there's, you know, financial literacy, like, you need to know about that shit. And there's, like, there's a lot of things that you need to take from school that that will help you in the real world, but just don't, just don't get programmed out there. Oh, I'm saying, I didn't get programmed. My niggas beside me didn't get programmed. Press didn't get programmed, and they thought because we were fucking high school fallouts or dropouts or niggas got GEDs that we weren't gonna be successful. But that really helped us, honestly. Because if we got programmed, we would have been like everybody else, paying fucking nine to five, living paycheck to paycheck, struggling with bills. Fucking COVID comes, and now you're losing your house. Da 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 da. Don't just get trapped in that cycle. Be more. Because we all have energy. You just got to channel your energy into what you want. And just focus. Be determined. Be dedicated into whatever you want. Like I told people, whatever I'm doing, I'm not special. Whatever I'm doing is because I want to do it. And whatever he's doing beside me is nothing special. Because it's just where he's putting his energy. So if you put your energy into something and you focus on it, whether it's basketball, whether it's rapping, whether it's being a lawyer, it's whatever... You get what you put in, bro. And that's why LeBron is who he is. Because he puts in. And you just got to put in dedication. Put in these hours. Put in it. Put in it. And then you get results. Just like when you guys go work out every day. That's where you're channeling your energy. You're going to work out. You're going to work out. That's why you're getting those results. If I don't work out, I'm not getting those results. I could be fortunate. And you know, I just could be God blessed. Some people are just God blessed. But at the end of the day, if you want something, just go work for it. Just work hard. Be determined. And be consistent, too. It's key. Be punctual. Like I said, pretty much it. I'll say like yeah, same shit. That's it. Like he said, I'm like, just don't be afraid to like fuck, follow your dreams and shit, shit like that. Like, if you want to start a business, go try to start a business. Like if you want to like make t-shirts or fucking do whatever you have, like an idea that oh I want to do this to get to get to make money. That's like not always something legal. You should like try those stuff out because you never know what could happen or what could work out. Yeah, because that's what it is. All don't be good. Uh, next thing, too. Next, like, don't be, like, going crazy and shit, like, trying to, like, f- keep up or, like, oh, uh-huh. I need to have this, I need to have that. Like, I need to be, like, YG. Like, niggas are still young. You guys, like, you know, some of you guys are, like, still young at the end of the day, too. Like, you don't need to, like, I'm fucking 22 years old. I need to have this fucking rolly list cube and this, that. Like, man, you guys are still young, too. Like, you have a lot of fucking way to go, you know? Like, mm-hmm. yeah, but you don't need to fucking crash out and mm-hmm. just trying to get little shit right now, you know? Good. It's good ambition, but like, yeah. And there's other things to do. Like, you don't have to do illegal shit, like you said. You don't have to channel your energy into selling drugs and doing armed robberies and doing all these types of shit that they train us to do in in, in these communities and this environment. You know, like make make your own name, man. There's niggas going to NBA. There's niggas like press making out. There's stars. Shaquille's over there making it out, like playing soccer. There's other ways, like you said. There's merch guys. 
There's guys that keep six solid. Mm. Came from the hood, doing mm. other ways, right. getting legit money. There's six, six plus. There's a lot of legit avenues to make money now. Now that we have the internet, so just don't, 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 don't be out here just trying to chase that fast money. And just build that. Build your legit shit. It's cool too, like you know. I don't know if people told you it's not cool to be legit or it's cool to sell drugs. Selling drugs is not cool, but you don't want to do all that shit. Is this where I got it made at Kalani? It's just 35. So that's like a number, like my jersey, like my jersey number. That 35 with a snake on it. Uh, Cuban, nice Cuban. Nice diamonds, big stones. So when you hear him heavy. rapping about 200 on the neck, that's what he's talking Heavy, I have two two Prezzies on there now. Twin Prezzies. Twin Prezzies, two Sky Dollars. You know what it is? Two White Dow. What do you say? Yellow Twin Prezzies. They're like 57k each. What do you say? The drippiest niggas in the city? So right now, this is like on my wrist, I have like 100 something. My neck, I have like two something. So just like three something this and come on here. Really. Really. Next Bell Oz. So that was a half was a quick half a mil right in front of the camera. We worked hard, you know. Did a lot of rap, put up a lot of music. I have lots of mixtapes. I have like mix eight mixtapes. I have lots of singles. I have lots of fucking features that I did. I have lots of fucking um Did you start business. off with that though? No, I never started off with this. I just all had to work and I had to save and I had to like it, 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 it comes as it comes, you know, like Oh, today I might get a fucking, oh, they want a mixtape for fucking, say, 20 bands. But after that mixtape goes good, they want a now mixtape for 50 bands. That mixtape goes good, now they want a mixtape for 80 bands. Like, just have to fucking just keep going and going and going. And it's just, yeah, it's just hard work pays off at the end of the day. So I don't think it just came overnight. Because if you go back to when he came out of jail, you see what Bussy was rocking that time and what he's been rocking now. So it's just a different time. You just see the progress. And the work that niggas are putting in. So don't think niggas ain't out here working. We're all here working every day. And there's lots of fucking Canada. They give you like a lot of fucking. They give you like the same shit with this guy saying like grants. You can get like there's a lot of shit to help you out, to help people out, help you like build yourself and build your brand and to do a lot of stuff. So niggas like you just have to look look into that shit and just know what you're doing and know where to know who you're asking the questions to and who could help you. Cause like there's a lot of shit that like. I got free money from that. I never even knew I could get free money from just doing this. So like, soul cans and shit like that. Like, eh? There's a lot of shit. Free money and all this. Number one press got his first 20 bags from soul can. That was fun. I think that was like the first check he ever got 20 bad. You were there too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mailed it to the house. Deposited it in the bank. Down. Yeah, press started. Show it to Cali. Cali helped us got that check. Took us 20%. Huh? <laughs> 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 you mean, he's, that, you know? he's on the matter for that 20 piece. I don't run that poor man. <laughs> oh, he's a hitter. Honestly, it's bad. I converted in um, 2012, and this is my first Ramadan. I haven't passed it due to sickness. I've just been sick. I don't know what's wrong with me. Body's giving up on me. I think I'm getting old. I'm just not eating the right things, honestly. And for this year, my goal is to eat better because it's kind of fucked up that I'm actually doing Ramadan for the first time and not fasting. Bad. But inshallah, I'll make it up. Like I said, my body can't even handle it. I'm a guy that fasts all year round. Could ask for me. I'll eat. I'll eat at like six, seven o'clock just for no reason. I feel like that's just catching up to me. I low on vitamins or whatever, but right now my body can't take it. I get those crazy migraines if I don't eat, and it never used to be like this. So, shout out to everyone that's fasting. Inshallah, all that makes it easier for you to fast. Like do it for you. And yeah, okay. inshallah next year we we'll go to Mecca. We we'll do Hajj, and that's what I really want to do. That's the one thing I want to do before my time. <laughs> yeah, I'm half, I'm half band too. I tell everybody I'm half band too. But um, I just grew up with, like off a lot of my friends are Somali, so like sometimes they'll just be talking shit, and I just catch on to what they're saying. Like even sometimes I'll be in a like 
I'll go to Somali restaurant, people be in there talking Somali and I'll catch on one, two words what they're saying just from being around my homies and shit, you know? And that's like, that's how, that's how I just, I get it, I get it. My favorite word? Hello, bio, fucking... Like, what do you uh, You need the fucking, foot win, all foot the seals, win, ghost, 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 ghost fucking Canis, Canis, the Dillos, Dillo, <laughs> huh? fucking, <laughs> hey, I know, up, I know, so many the shit. full ace, you know, <laughs> huh? Dante Moha, you know what I'm saying, we have the real words, <laughs> Sucker John, Sucker John, you fucking hey. Dolly, <laughs> Ascot, no, Ascot, we don't fuck with no Ascot around here, because hey, we don't fuck with the Dolly's, for sure. You know what? Dimming us off for all the dollies. Don't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> Shoot the deck. We're not playing with you guys. You know what I'm saying? Kale. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Kale, Kale. You know, we have Soba. our Mindy's. Soba. When we're in Hubsy, we have our Mindy's. Yeah. Don't fuck around. You know, we don't want to have to turn you guys to halal meat in there. So just, you know, we I mean, know it all. I mean, you know, we go OT, so Daga. That was yeah. back in the days. Hunter. Hunter. Shaka. Shaka. I have everything, kind of balling up gear though. Like it's, it's basically it's it's a culture now. Like yeah. Somali, it's just like being like fucking. It's our Jamaican, slang, Jamaican. Like fuck, you know, probably say something like, like pot Jamaican of. slang, pot of slang and shit like that. It's, it's the same shit. We all grew together, you know. Yeah, you already know, man. Solid sixteen is done. We out of here. Thirty five. Corona and BFR bundog. You know how we coming? Twenty twenty three. Solid sixteen. It's gonna be the hottest shit. We're coming for you, Bush man. You know our dogs, he did it today, second one, but we're coming for that 500k.